Joining me now is Ben Ginsburg, the former general counsel for the Republican National Committee and an MSNBC political analyst, and the former chairman of the RNC, Michael Steele, also an analyst here at MSNBC. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us. Out of the gates, I want to play for you a new ad from Donald Trump just released within the last 20 minutes. Here is that ad that's being called Dangerous. Our next president faces daunting challenges in a dangerous world. Iran promoting terrorism, North Korea threatening, ISIS on the rise, Libya and North Africa in chaos. Hillary Clinton failed every single time as Secretary of State. Now she wants to be president. Hillary Clinton doesn't have the fortitude, strength, or stamina to lead in our world. She failed as Secretary of State. Don't let her fail us again. To be very clear, the ad is titled Dangerous, effectively saying that Hillary Clinton would be a dangerous president for this country. First, Michael, to you, just your take on that. And, and as you may have seen there, there are moments that highlights her coughing uh, on the trail, her stumbling at the 9-11 memorial. What do you make of this new effort by the Trump campaign? Well, it plays to some of the, the messaging that has come out of the campaign about Hillary's health, for sure. Uh, it doesn't directly address that. It just shows you uh, those, those moments where her, she was having a problem with her health. Uh, well, pretty you know, directly it, addresses it, right? Because it says she lacks the fortitude or the stamina or the strength. Right, so. but I mean, it's not, yeah, it's not calling her sick or, you know, you know right. it's just showing, connecting the imagery with the words. Uh, you know, the effectiveness of that, you know, remains to be seen. I, I think that there's so much more about the campaign that overshadows even an effort like this that becomes problematic for, for uh, the campaign because they have not been talking about and setting the stage for this kind of an ad. Um, I mean, you, you got to set these things up. You just don't throw an ad out on the air uh, to yeah. transition or change the conversation. You've got to set that up. If you've been laying the groundwork with your messaging and your yeah. policy proposals, then these types of ads have a much bigger impact, I believe, on, on the electorate. Ben, just your take on that. Obviously, the people that don't like Hillary Clinton are going to love this ad, but those people who are undecided, does this resonate with the people that you need ultimately to win? Well, Ronald Reagan's morning in America, it's not. Uh, look, the, what the ad drives for is the high negatives that Hillary Clinton maintains in all the polls. I mean, if you, if you read the polls that have all been coming out, she is still the second uh, least popular presidential candidate in history. And I think that the Trump campaign has obviously decided that they need to, to bore in on that. Let me, let me ask you guys, if I can, right now, about this civil war that we've been talking about within the campaign. Michael, I was watching the debate, and I was watching Twitter at the same time. You tweeted a mushroom cloud and said, basically, the GOP at this moment. A lot of Republicans right now are facing this undesirable, there, there's the tweet that you put out there, this undesirable situation, an excruciating dilemma, if, as we've described it, where there could be career-ending consequences no matter what they choose. If they stick with Trump, then ultimately they may have to defend him if they pull away from Trump, then they right. may have to defend themselves against the base. Let me play the way Senator Johnson handled this in Wisconsin just a couple days ago. Do you still fully support Donald Trump? Uh, what I've been saying is I obviously will not vote for Hillary Clinton. Uh, nobody can predict how this entire thing uh, pans out, but you know, a lot of people are asking me that question. People should be asking Senator Feingold, does he fully support Hillary Clinton? Uh, listen, I, I'm not going to defend uh, Donald Trump's despicable words. They're, they're indefensible. But I don't know how Senator Feingold can support Hillary Clinton's actions. So, how, Michael, how does this play out? I mean, how do you walk this tightrope, and is that an effective message? I, you know, I think for a lot of these folks at this point, it, there is no tightrope to walk. You're, you're either in or you're out. I mean, you, you have to, if you're a candidate like a Ron Johnson in a tough uh, reelect effort, you, you're going to have to make that hard decision. You know, and, and part of that calculation is so, so just how much of the, quote, Trump base uh, is there in your you particular need. state or, or a district that's going to have right. an impact. You know, it, it, it's, you've got to go beyond that because the party right now is struggling with internal uh, corrosion. And it has to come to grips with that. Donald Trump is just an outlier of that. He's, he's the one who's kind of really pointed, that, pointed us more into that direction to see it for what it is. So this, this is something that even goes beyond Donald Trump, which makes it harder for a lot of these candidates to answer questions like that. And Ben, you saw this sort of renewed feud between the House Speaker, Paul Ryan, effectively the most powerful elected Republican in the country, and Donald Trump right now. As for Paul Ryan's situation, not 
pulling off his endorsement, but basically saying, everybody, you just do what you need to win. Well, what Paul Ryan is clearly doing is saying that my top priority is preserving my majority in the House of Representatives. He's got a really tough job because that comes down to 20, 30, 40 right. very different congressional seats with very different types of candidates. So at this point, we all try and, and lump all Republican candidates together. Right. And I think that's a bit unfair because there yeah, are different conditions and different people. That's I right. think you're right. Michael, I want to ask you about a. a what is basically the, the primary mainstream evangelical magazine, it's called Christianity Today, has a stunning new editorial with the headline, Speak the Truth to Trump. Evangelicals of all people should not be silent about Trump's blatant immorality, it writes. What does it mean here? And I'll put up just on the screen right now. Here's one of the quotes that struck me. He wantonly celebrates straw men and takes every opportunity to humiliate and demean the vulnerable. He shows no curiosity or capacity to learn. He is, in short, the very embodiment of what the Bible calls a fool. This is what it's saying, an evangelical magazine about the man who touts the love he feels in the evangelical community. Is that a <laughs> dagger? Yes, it's a dagger. Absolutely, it's a dagger. But here's the rub. He's still pulling a, a significant uh, percentage of the evangelical vote behind him. They're supporting him. So that's, that's the conundrum. Again, it's, uh, I think... Well, a, could an, that change? I guess they it, don't have anywhere else to well, go. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, you would think by now it would have, but it hasn't. Maybe this is that straw on the Campbell's back that, that breaks it for him. I don't know. But it, again, speaks to the underlying corrosion that exists within the party, that frustration and, and the, the tug and pull from one side or the other. The disparate right. groups within the party still haven't come to reconcile their own uh, view of Donald Trump. So hey, here we are. Ben, final thoughts to you. You were national counsel to the Bush-Cheney campaign in 2000. Al Gore back on the trail in Florida today. You having flashbacks? <laughs> <laughs> I am having flashbacks. Um, look, the, the way this race is unfolding, what's going to be really interesting to watch is what happens on the field. The RNC has talked about its ground game. What happens if that vaunted RNC ground game finds a Hillary Clinton voter who wants to help a Republican Senate candidate? Reince Priebus said yeah. yesterday they were tied to the top of the ticket to Donald Trump. What happens in that situation is going right. to play a key role in not only the presidential, but also the down ballot races. Michael Steele, Ben Ginsburg, gentlemen, nice to be with you. Thanks so much, guys. Hi, guys. Thanks. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.